this is a video to help you when sewing up and finishing off your anglerfish. So you're going to have made um, a big body piece like this and you will have a centralizer marker in it. And it's important that you leave in your stitch marker as well in both pieces that you're making. So what you've then got to do is line up your inner mouth with your centralizer point and your end of round marker. So if you haven't left one in, it was where you finished, if you see what I mean. So that was the last stitch that you worked there and your centralizer point. You need to line that up with the piece here. Place your stitch marker in like that. And then what we're going to do is double crochet right the way around the edge. going through the stitch closest to your centralizer and then through the last stitch that you've worked on the inner mouth like that. And I'm going to go in through the outside. So I'm going to slip stitch to begin with just so that that's in position. And then I'm going to double crochet through this one and then through your inner mouth one like that and double crochet right the way around the edge. And there we go, like that. Then what we want to do next is we want to actually add our stuffing before we put our tail piece on. So you'll have made a tail piece, which is um, three pieces that you double crochet together and then put webbing in between. We're going to sew that directly on. Once we've added the stuffing. So put your stuffing in and what you want to do is make sure that it is to the front of the mouth, but you want that um, inner mouth to sit back in a concave way. So that's all you've got to watch is that you don't overstuff it to the point where this um, piece in the middle pushes forwards. Now, the two markers that we had in, they form the top of the head. So um, if you're wondering which way is up, um, it's those two markers there that is the top of the head like that. So just manipulate that stuffing around a little bit so that you've definitely got a nice bulbous piece on the bottom and push that mouth in so it goes backwards. And um, we will put a securing thread in that will just hold that in place a little bit more when we do the final finishing. But now it comes to sewing our tail on. So that's going to seal that stuffing inside. Now I have cut off all my ends here. Your best bet would be to leave some ends on, but if you ever need to rejoin on, you can just re-sew it onto one end like that. And so our markers are the top of our jaw like this. It's the top jaw. So we want our tail to run at a right angle to the top of that head. So what you need to do is fold your tail end flat like that at a right angle um, to the right in between those two markers like that. So sew it flat, uh, hold it flat like that. And then we're going to sew this tail onto the end. Now I'm gonna put a tiny bit more stuffing in there. You see how I've, how I've got stuffing in there, but it doesn't go right to the end. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there like that before I then fold that flat. Check once again that's straight. And then I'm going to sew on my tail end directly onto these stitches. So with the tailpiece in position, next it's time to add our um, Mohican 
fin down at the front so you've got a longer one and a shorter one and then they vary in length and you're going to have webbed in between it's the longest one that we want to put on the front of our fish now we will be adding the stem and the bait right there on the front afterwards so leave yourself a gap for that and you want to be around one two three four five six seven eight rounds back where you start sewing this on if you will find it easier to pin it before you commit to sewing it, you might do with this one because all you might have to keep doing is picking this up to make sure you stay in a nice straight line heading down from, from the centre of the jaw back towards that tail. So you've got your two markers again on the front. You want to be in the middle of your two markers about eight rounds back and heading in a straight line down towards your tail there. And what I'm going to do is a very similar technique. I'm going to sew right the way down one side and then come back up and do the same on the other. So next I'm going to sew into place the stalk and the bait. Obviously beyond the teeth, the absolute characteristic feature of the anglerfish and how it catches its prey. I'm just going to secure it and end again in the same way. And then sew this onto the front here. Like that. Right, next we're going to add the two fins. So I haven't got, once again, a thread on here. You've got a longer, a medium and a short again. So you've got different length fins and we want the longer ones to be to the top as we sew these into position. Like that. So then just match the other fin to the other side. Again, with that longer one to the top. And this might be easier from underneath if you position it like that. Again, use your centralizer markers to make sure that you're all lined up. Right, and then last but by no means least, let's add the eyes first and then we're going to add these teeth on. Um, so it's a very important finishing feature of this design. It will be to put these cream teeth into position. So with the eyes, I've just got a black eye thread. I've opted to go for quite big eyes on this design to counter those teeth a little bit, just to add some cuteness back in. Right, so snip off the eyes. I'm gonna remove that stitch marker. I'm actually gonna sew that end in, and then it's time for us to do our teeth. So you'll have four lengths of cream and your jaw is divided into four sections. So you've got obviously into quarters. We're going to start from our centralizer point as we put our teeth in. And the most important thing when we're working them is we want them to be wrong side facing so they curve inwards. Um, so that means that as a right handed crocheter, what I'm going to be doing is actually crocheting from my centralizer point and I'll be going across the top of my eyes first. And what you need to do is slip stitch into this round down here. So we're not going to be slip stitching right into those ones that we did. We're going to slip stitch um, down 
into the round back there rather than into that actual edge one that we did. So I'm just going to come one stitch back there because I'm not quite in line with my centralizer. And then what you do is you're going to work these teeth. So um, you've got two different teeth lengths in there, two, three, four, five. What you need to be aware of is you won't have enough yarn to do all the long ones. Um, so don't push it and do them all long. You need to do a nice mixture, um, again, following your pattern between the two lengths. You will not just as a warning, unless you've got extra cream double knit um, where you want to go for it and do all your teeth really, really long, um, do a mixture of the two different lengths. It looks kind of cool because these um, fish do seem to have very bad teeth too. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whenever they're depicted, um, you do see that all their teeth are different lengths. So that's why you've got two different teeth lengths. Just vary them up as you go. and then slip stitch in. And so that's what you're going to do, is you're going to move right the way around, continue this in this same direction. You'll be using one thread that will get you to about the middle, then another thread, and then a thread there, and a thread there, and that will complete your anglerfish. Now, the last thing just to mention, if you find that you might have put a bit too much stuffing in, or if the inside of your mouth keeps coming out, all you can do to fix that into place is you can sew a thread from the tail, somewhere back here, in through like that. Just catch the center. So don't pull it right the way through, hold it like that. Catch the center, so I'm actually not quite in the center there, I'm not by my ring. But catch the ring like that, and then take that thread right the way back through and secure them off on the tail. And all that will do is pull that mouse in. You see how I can then pull that mouse right inside hold both ends you can pull that mouth right inside and then you can secure off those two threads so that that way um, the mouth doesn't move forward at all so once you've done that you just secure them off like that and that means that that mouth will then stay in position uh, i hope you've really enjoyed this project a really unusual pattern uh, one that i had to really ponder for a very long time i love this colorway of the teal and the magenta um and the orange. Um, brilliant for Halloween. A scary one, but a cute one all the same. I can't wait to see your make, so share them using um, hashtag Ed's Dye Club. <laughs>